so right now we've said that uh, if you're a member of the, uh, the patent bar, you can represent a client uh, in front of the USPTO to prosecute a patent to basically uh, file the application and hopefully that will mature into an actual patent when they'll become the applicant becomes the patent owner. And then you've got litigation practice where the patent owner uh, can uh, sue infringers starting in federal district court and going up to the federal circuit uh, on intermediate appeal and then to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, there's one other wrinkle that might be worth unpacking, and, and, and as you've described, the uh, patent prosecution is interesting, but that's largely kind of a technical uh, uh, practice uh, in the sense of you're basically trying to convince the patent examiner that your patent, uh, your invention meets the technical requirements for a patent. And then litigation is really a traditional kind of litigation practice with the uh, deeply technical, a factual background that you have to deal with. But the other aspect uh, is the administrative practice, that if you're a, an attorney who's interested in administrative law, uh, those, uh, those skills do come up both in prosecution and litigation, but they also come up when you're maybe challenging a, uh, a rejection by the patent office. And they may also come up in the context of the PTAB, so for the students out there who are starting, another area that's really important for them to study, I think, is administrative law. Right. And uh, so we do have some time now. We do have, we're doing well in time. This is very informative. Uh, could you talk a little bit about, for example, if you do get rejected by the, by the PTO, what is the avenue in court uh, or uh, for appealing that rejection? And then we also have the PTAB, which fits into that a little bit but also can be a, a sort of a supplement to litigation, but from an administrative side rather than from a federal court side. So that's right. a lot that's, to unpack, I know, but uh, maybe you can help us with that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so um, let's go back to how you, when you file the patent, you're dealing with patent examiners and you try to get your patent allowed. If your patent is rejected, or if some claims are rejected, there is a internal appellate body within the US Patent and Trademark Office called the PTAB. That's the Patent Trials and Appeals Board. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be before the AIA, before um, the AIA was passed in September 16, 2011, uh, the same body was called the BPAI. So in some mm -hmm. of your readings, you will see this referred to as the Board of Patent Appeals and Interferences, BPAI. Mm -hmm. Uh, today, mm -hmm. we don't have interference practice anymore as we've moved to a modified first to file system. Um, so today, that same body is called PTAB, Patent Trial and Appeals Board. So you can take an appeal from the examining core's rejections, and you will have a three-judge set of administrative patent judges. And so these are ex parte appeals. So now, in front of the PTAB, it's you on one side, but, but the examiner is on the other side. So you both write your briefs. Uh, you you mm -hmm. can write your brief. The examiner will write his brief uh, supporting why he is correct. And then the PTAB decides. Now, once the PTAB makes a decision, let us suppose the PTAB says, no, we're not going to allow these claims. At that point, you can go to judicial review. And at that point, again, you have two paths. If you want to introduce more evidence, then you can go to federal district court in the Eastern mm -hmm. District of Virginia. Um, and typically, at that point, applicants want to introduce something like an expert. That's one of the main reasons why they might go to federal district court. To introduce more expert testimony to support why the patent should be granted. Mm -hmm. If you believe the record is fine and you don't need any additional supplementation by way of evidence, you can go directly to the federal circuit that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So you essentially go from patent examiner to PTAB to federal circuit. So that's, okay. that's the way the prosecution piece of it works all the way to the federal circuit. And by the way, if you get rejected there, you can go and take appeal the federal circuit's decision all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, if you believe that a patent should have been granted, and, and by the way, this is not so unusual. 
right. actually do have a decent number of cases that start in the patent office um, that end up in uh, the Supreme Court. In, for example, early on in your readings, you might read a case called Diamond versus Chakrabarty. <laughs> it's an example of where uh, Diamond was actually the commissioner of the patent office at that time. And so it went all the way to the Supreme Court. Um, and uh, Bilski versus Capos as well. Yeah. Number of uh, issues related to patentability that go all the way to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the patent litigation side, let us say the patent owner A sues defendant B. Remember how what I told you that the Defendant B can argue that the patent is invalid or that the patent is not infringed. Now, he can argue in district court that the patent is invalid, and then he has to put up with the presumption of validity and clear and convincing evidence standard, or he can go to the PTAB. So this PTAB, it's important to understand, it's kind of straddling between the stage one and stage two. So when you're in stage two, you, the defendant, B, can go and file a petition at the PTAB arguing that the claim that had been asserted against them is invalid. And then now you're once again facing the preponderance of the evidence standard at the PTAB. Yeah. So the PTAB can arise, uh, just to give a very basic understanding, one is if there is a rejection by the examiner, that would be an appeal there from the applicant. But the other is once the patent is granted, uh, somebody can then go to the PTAB to challenge the patent. Again, this goes back to a point you made before about how patent prosecution is an ex parte proceeding. It's between the applicant and the examiner uh, there are some instances when parties can introduce prior art, but those are, it's not really an inter partes, it's ex parte, really. It's not uh, the applicant against the world, it's the applicant against the examiner. Correct. Uh, but once the patent is granted, the PTAB can also uh, be uh, appealed to by the world or by anybody who has, uh, it's a pretty broad basis for standing, right, to bring uh, a challenge in the PTAB, right? Correct. So, so in principle, at the PTAB, any 